it's well established that surgical treatment can be helpful for patients who have migraine headaches. You can see on this model here that uh, the nerves are white. Here, for instance, we have the greater occipital nerve coming up that way, okay, up in here, and then you have the third occipital nerve, and then over in this area, you don't see it in this model, but there's also the lesser occipital nerve. Those nerves can be implicated in patients who have migraine headaches, and we can do surgery on those nerves. It's an outpatient procedure, which helps patients with their migraine headaches. She went from 28 migraine days a month to two migraines a year after we did her surgery. Now in her case, we ended up having to do all three phases of the surgery. So there's the surgery on these nerves here. There's another group of nerves called the auriculotemporal nerves right up in here, just in front of the ear that come up this way. And then there's a set of nerves up here that we call the supraorbital and supratrochlear nerves. So we can do surgery on those three. I don't typically do all three at the same time. We'll treat the first set of nerves, the ones that seem to be the primary source of the patient's headaches. We'll treat those first and see how you do. Greater than half of the patients that we treat that way only end up needing surgery on one set of nerves. I tell everybody after this operation that for the first two weeks after surgery, I don't want you to lift anything heavier than a gallon of milk. And that's mainly because I don't want the stitches to pop. I don't want you to end up with bleeding. I don't want you to end up with a uh, with a wound complication. Uh, the third week after surgery, you can lift up to 20 pounds. The fourth week after surgery, you can lift up to 40 pounds. Uh, and after four weeks, assuming everything's healed okay, you can do whatever you want. The incision for the occipital nerves, I usually do from here to about here. That gives me access to all of the different nerves that are gonna be involved. We usually do it up in the hairline so that it's hidden, so that let's say you have long hair and you like to wear it up, it'll be hidden up there. We, I try to avoid doing it down low where the scar will be more obvious. Uh, when we do the surgery for the auriculotemporal nerves, again, up in the hairline, I make an incision that's oriented like this, about this long. It's not very long at all. It's hidden up in the hair uh, and that gives us access to those nerves and that heals pretty well also. It's very difficult to see that scar. The incision that I'm most proud of is the one that we use for the supraorbital super and supratrochlear nerves. That incision gets made right up in here, under the eyebrow, right in the fold where the eyelid meets the rest of the face. As a plastic surgeon as a, and also as an ENT surgeon, as a facial plastic surgeon, I have a lot of experience making that incision and helping patients look younger. In that case, we can use the same incision, same approach to address the concerns with your headaches as well and minimize the scar, hide it in such a way that people will never know you had surgery. Ours is the only center in Nebraska in this region of the country that offers this treatment for the treatment of migraines, and for the treatment of occipital neuralgia. So if you have headaches as a result of migraines or headaches as a result of occipital neuralgia, and you're tired of all the other treatments that you've tried that haven't worked, we have an option for you. We've had some great results with this and the patients have been just absolutely ecstatic.